Um, welcome. Uh, this is using the editorially module to improve accessibility in Drupal. Um, I'm Mark Casillas. I'm a Drupal tech lead slash, I think there's another title in there, but I don't know what it is. Um, I work at Canopy Studios. It's a really great place to work if you, if you need it. Um, if you need to find me, I'm on the slacks as Marky, and then Drunken Drupal is my Twitter handle. And then I guess I have Bluebird or all the other social medias that are coming out of the woodwork these days. Um, like I said, I work at Canopy. We are uh, hiring a couple of people. Mainly, we're looking for some contract website developers, Drupal developers, um, and also some quality assurance engineers. Um, there are a couple of really fun tasks that are coming down the pipeline that we're looking for some solid people for. Uh, so, and I would really recommend working for the company. Um, I am giving this talk again, this exact same one, in uh, DrupalCon Lil. So I, I would appreciate your feedback if something's going on, going bad, aside from this. Um, but uh, so yeah, if you uh, it's want, Lil, Lil, what? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to learn it, part of it in French. Just enough French so all the French speakers would go, please, God, switch back to English. But uh, um, I also run, uh, I help on the planning committee of accessibility talks. It's allytalks.com. And once a month we do a, uh, another monthly talk about accessibility, usability, um, uh, dd and i all the great stuff. If you go to allytalks.com, you can find out about that. I like promoing a lot of stuff. I'm also giving a talk in Drupal Camp, Colorado. That one's going to be different. I'm stealing Mike Herschel's um, talk about uh, single directory components. So there's that. Oh, and also Decouple Days. I actually run Decouple Days. It's going to be in Albuquerque. So if you want to come to Albuquerque, which is where I'm from, and talk about Decoupled, uh, that'll be fun as well. So there's my dog, Drew, also, because that's the actual one that you want to see. So what are we going to talk about this in this session? We're going to talk about the editorially module, which is a module um, that the, the topic. I'm also I threw in an accessibility checklist module because uh, that's actually a really good one to to prep your site uh, for accessibility. The editorially module is more for real time checking, um, and the accessibility checklist module is more of something that you can run as a guide to setting up your site. Um, wasn't part of the title because I threw it in uh, later. I do want to talk a quick accessibility overview, but I can't really think of anything to say other than it's important. You're going to want to, your website, you're wanting to be uh, compliant, at least AA, if not AAA, uh, for the week, uh, WCAG standards. Um, accessibility it affects so many people for so many different ways, so please think about it. So let's move on to the ed Editorially Accessibility Checker. It's a module in Drupal, uh, very simple uh, set, site to set up. One of the things that I like about it is once you install it, it's already turned on. And um, something that uh, one of the uh, developers said, it's like a spell checker. You don't have to go press a button to check it. If someone, ha if you had to go press a button to, to turn on your spell checker, you probably wouldn't turn it on. You'd forget. You wouldn't use it. Spell checkers are just turned on, and you got to deal with them. This is the same thing for content management as well. So it actually runs in the background and checks everything for you, uh, real time, depending on if you get your user has the access to it uh, based on the permissions, of course, um, and it's exclusively on the content so it's looking at the stuff that you know when you're designing your website you're developing your website you think accessibility you have accessibility in mind but then the content developer comes in and does a bunch of silly stuff forgets all tags puts uh, puts uh, headers in out of order um, all that great stuff this actually will check that for you for them and then that way you don't run into this weird thing where you've given someone enough rope to hang themselves um, that's always the good thing about it. Uh, it is a fork off the Sally project, which is actually a WordPress plugin. WordPress plugin, um, and basically it runs in JavaScript. It's a, a whole GitHub uh, area. Really cool uh, information in there uh, if you ever want to check that out. 
Uh, this is kind of what it looks like, and I'm going to hop into the, the demo, the live demo of it, but this is an image placeover. Um, let's go. Oh man, I gotta escape. Fine. This is the same 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 uh, page as, as that screenshot. You'll notice down here in the bottom, it actually shows you that there are seven issues detected. You can actually look through all of them, or you have these little tool tips that explain what's going on. Um, Everybody can see that okay? Yeah? Yeah? Um, shows that, you know, like this header is out of order, uh, possibly. It, it was, was something skipped. And then you can say, okay, well, fine. That's, that's fine. I don't need to worry about that anymore. Then it talks about this uh, link. So it actually, you're, you've got the, the, my head bobbing on you. Um, so it, what is, what's great is it can go through all these different things, mark them down, and then you can say... Well, I don't really care about that anymore, or this is something that, you know, identifiable as a very strict issue because the image alt tag is not in there. So you want to make sure that the person goes in there and changes it and edits and changes and whatnot. Here's a table without uh, header cells. That's obviously not good for accessibility because the screen reader doesn't know where it's going or why it's, it's happening. And then it also has this great outline here where it shows you exactly what the... Uh, what the header levels are in the in the site itself, and you'll notice that right here it says, "Hey, you skipped an H3, and you moved directly to an H4." It'll show off the alt text, and you know, right here it says, "No alt text," so that's bad, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to fix it. I have it installed locally, and when you once you install it, it's there. It actually hides itself for you. You can click on that to expand, and then you can get the outlines here, and then the alt text of all the different images. And it's really unobtrusive, so you can actually minimize it and then close it out so that it just goes to be that bubble. Um, if you were to go to the site as a non logged in user, let me create a quick uh, incognito window. And you go to the site as a, as a non-logged in user, you obviously don't see that area going on. And then you don't have to worry about it, but the, the editors can actually test and, and take a look out for it as well. Um, configuration for this module. How many people here need to be shown how to install a Drupal module? Good, because I did not prepare for that. Um, you install it as normal, you know, download it through Composer. And then it just turns on. If you want to do some configuration, it has a, uh, some great config or uh, reports there for you, so you can see exactly which alerts have been dismissed. If someone goes into the main page here, and there's this issue here. Oh, show show the hidden alerts. We have this issue here that we, someone said, okay, that that's fine. It's already taken care of. We don't have to worry about it. Then you can actually go into the, the reports area as an admin and actually show which ones have been uh, dis dismissed. What are the pages that actually have some issues so you can actually get a not notification of what's going on in there, uh, which is really nice because like this front page had eight issues found that we ignored because, well, we, we found those good. But if we go to this main, uh, the, the surface page, it actually has one issue checked and the fact that it's using the heading was skipped, which is very interesting because if you take a look at this in the outline, it goes H1, H3, and H2 in comments. So the tags are using H3, and then the comments are afterwards. So that's a configuration thing where you can switch those blocks around where your comments would come before the tags, or you'd want to actually code that out in the template file to make the the comments in H4, H3 as well, or the tag's something different. I probably wouldn't even use H3 as a, for the tag. That seems kind of weird, you know? Because um, it's just a, it's not really a header area unless it's missing, you know, there's a hidden um, title there that we're talking about. Um, other configurations that options that are there. Um, 
It has a lot of different things that it can do. You can change the theme on there to a classic dark. You can actually only check in your main container so it doesn't bother with the header or the footer. Because once you get the header and footer right, you don't need to, that looked at every single time. So you can actually just try it based on the, uh, uh, you know, like the uh, CSS selector main or something like that. Um, which is really cool. You can actually, or you can define saying, okay, we don't want footers or uh, main menu checked out and that that will actually change that configuration for you it's got a lot of other javascript uh, things going on um, because it's using javascript in the back end to do run the tests and run run everything there are a lot of different things that you can do with the javascript one thing about that is the library um, is necessary so if you try to overwrite it you have to overwrite it in your libraries and uh, you, you should know what you're doing at that point um, you can customize how the results are, are looking. So instead of just having this great, you know, which I don't see why you'd want it, maybe to make it look more like your style of your site, um, you can uh, run through it a different way, having the uh, the different checks be in a, in a different style. Where was that? Yeah, there we go. And then... Um, the results dashboard, which is this area over here, you know, it can actually see which uh, queries that you're looking for and where and whatnot. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was what it actually, oh yeah, that's back in this guy here, so I can go back to the slideshow. Um, what's it testing? It's testing for text alternatives. Images without alt text, uh, all images with very, very long alt text, which are e even less useful than no alt text. Um, things that say a photo of, which is really not that descriptive to, to there. So uh, it says actually testing for all the different text alternatives. It's testing for meaningful links because they want to make sure that all your links are, uh, are, um, are, are described properly whether or not they're popping into a new window or not, because that actually affects some screen readers. If you have something popping off to a new tab or a new window, the screen reader could get lost if you're not doing it properly. So you might want to make sure you have the rel no follow and all that other stuff. But it lets you know, hey, did you do this? It, it's, it's, a, it's a checker. Links with bad titles like click here or for more or stuff, that stuff. Um, it's also checking if the uh, document outline, like I said, the H, uh, the headings uh, level, whether or not they're in order and they're being used properly. Um, with tables without headers, which are very um, necessary. I, the the suspicious, suspiciously short block quotes was something I didn't know was an issue, but it's testing for that as well, um, which I thought is very interesting. Does this still do this? No, it doesn't. Hold on. I got this stupid pointer for a reason. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Yay. It does do that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> for no reason other than I can do it. Uh, it does general quality assurance of your your content. Make sure that, you know, you're not doing a lot of ho uh, caps lock. Uh, no screaming on there. Links to PDFs and documents are, uh, are actually... Uh, Notated, making sure that that's uh, notated. The video embeds and all that other stuff have the proper tools uh, on there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, another thing that it's testing. And this is stuff that, again, is tested automatically. So you don't have to think, oh, I better go check it. Because it's checking it for you once you install the module. Um, this is my best slide I ever made, ever. This is where I say, you know installation and configuration, but I kind of already went over, like I said, you don't need to be taught how to install a Drupal module, um, unless you want to, I mean. But, uh, and then it shows the configuration there. It's a pretty easy out of the box installation. Um, and then the reports area is another thing, like I said, where, uh, it shows you what issues are common, which is really nice. That way you can start looking at 
who's who's con the content is being made by, and then maybe even mention to them that that that's a problem. Um, I found that, you know, like I said, this page here where we had the problem with the H3 or the um, the out of route or out of line elements. Um, that's in Drupal core that this is a, a stock install of Drupal core and so that's one of the things that maybe we should probably do an issue on that because that's an accessibility issue another thing you may have noticed is that there's only two pages that have been uh, tested so if I were to go to the front page again and then I you know I've only been to this page here so it never was tested I can go to it's them or list them or whatever it is now this issue pops up and it shows up in my report now as the second page that has an issue. So you can actually, it doesn't do it unless it actually needs to and it doesn't, you know, throw, throw a bunch of issues. But once you're con uh, creating content, you'll be able to add that um, and then you'll see what's going on. So this is really great for monitoring your content as well as then of course you have to do your extra stuff uh, to make sure your theme is accessible, that your color tones are right, and everything like that. Which brings me to the second part of the program, which is the Alley Project Checklist. Now this is a really cool module. It is actually created by Jim Birch, and I'm not saying it's really cool because he is my boss, although I would like a raise. Jim. Um, he really likes these checklist projects. And actually, I kind of like the checklist. Uh, if you haven't read this book, The Checklist Manifesto, it's a really, really interesting read about how doctors using checklists created less issues. They made sure that everything was in line and everything that was done in the proper order, and it lowered the, the death rates in some hospitals and how everybody said you should do this. Um, and so that makes checklists very, very useful if you're starting doing the same thing over and over again. If you're a developer that's running a bunch of sites, have a checklist of what you want to do before launch. Um, and this uh, Alley Project checklist, my other great slide, um, again, don't need to show you how to install the module, but you can actually go into the report and there's a checklist report. And then here's this Alley check checklist uh, project checklist. And what it does is it actually goes through each one of the WCAGs and actually makes a check for it. So if you want to be trip, uh, double A or triple A compliant, you can say, okay, we want to use figure, you know, try not to use figures of speech. I don't know how you're going to check that off because content is going to change, but at least you're aware of it. You want to make sure that you're at the right reading level. And then it gives you a link to where in the, uh, the what WCAG uh, standard that actually is uh, available for you. So it's a really neat little project uh, list. You can have your global code, it validates your HTML, make sure everything's parsed, and you just kind of go through all this before you say, you know, everything is done and everybody's happy um, and everything is awesome. I can say awesome, Amy June's not in the app room. Um, so this is another thing, that, and there are a bunch of different of the checklist modules. It uses the checklist API, so you can do this about your security. Uh, there, there's a security checklist that, that Jim has. There's a launch checklist that kind of grabs the Alley checklist or the Alley project checklist and the, uh, the, the the security checklist, and then there's one other checklist that I can't remember what it is. Um, and then once you're done making sure everything's checked off, all you have to do is say, okay, make sure that media doesn't autoplay. And then you save, and that actually saves that for you, puts it into the database that it's been done, it's been checked. Someone can go do an audit. Hey, did you remember to make sure media is in uh, autoplay? Absolutely, I completed that on the date, this date and time. Um, so it's a really good way to make sure that your site is always compliant. And, um, and has a, it gives a little bit more than what I originally was going to talk about, which was just the... Uh, the uh, editorially, because of course ed the content in editorially that's what's being covered, and now but there are other issues that your site ha may have overall. Um, and guess what, kids, I'm done. So 
<laughs> I guess actually, I mean, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be a full hour of this because, you know, everybody, like I said, everybody can install a module, so it's kind of hard to not worry about that. But did you, anybody have any questions about any of these things? Cool. Then I like short talks. I like being terse. Sorry you didn't get it because it's Napoli. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs>